Hi, and welcome to Train Signal. I'm Veronica Henry, and you're watching Getting Started with CompTIA Linux Plus Training Course. In this lesson, I'll start off with what I promise will be a brief introduction about who I am. Then I'll explain what we'll be doing in this course, things like the setup, the types of material we'll be covering, and then we'll wrap up with my thoughts on how you should use this course to get the maximum benefit, whether your ultimate goal is increasing your skill set or pursuing certification. So let me tell you a little bit about me. My fingers first graced the computer keyboard way back in middle school. It was an old Radio Shack TRS-80. It was quite the event when this computer landed at my school, and the impact on me was lasting. I knew then that I'd have a career in technology, and that's just the way that it worked out. I've worked in many capacities over the years, trying my hand at programming, help desk support, network administration, and program and project management. And during that time, I've held many certifications, including the Microsoft Certified Professional, the Microsoft Certified System Engineer, or MCSE, the SANS Institute's Global Security Essential Certification, the Project Management Institute's PMP, and more recently, Linux Plus, the Novell Certified Linux Administrator, or CLA, and the Linux Professional Institute's LPIC Level 1. Like many technology professionals, you can find me reading about, writing, testing, or otherwise tinkering with some new piece of software or hardware in my downtime. And on a more personal note, I also volunteer in my community through a public service organization that I belong to. We do things like mentoring girls, providing scholarships, and we also have an international focus on education and health projects in Africa. And besides technology, my other passion is sci-fi and fantasy reading and writing. Now let's switch gears and talk about everything we'll be doing in this course. First, I'd like to explain that this is actually a two-part course, segmented according to CompTIA's two certification exams and presented exactly in the order that CompTIA presents them. The first half is based on the objectives for the LX0101 exam, and the second half is based on the LX0102 exam objectives. For those of you interested in pursuing Linux Plus certification, CompTIA suggests you have at least a year of network administration experience, and that could be either in Windows or Linux, along with the CompTIA A Plus and CompTIA Net Plus certification. And those certifications are not prerequisites, just recommendations that you have that level of skill. And with that in mind, in this course, we'll begin with a look at Linux hardware settings. Essentially, this material covers how Linux interacts with system hardware. We'll go over how to configure and manage things like peripherals, IRQs, and ports. Next, we'll cover the boot process, which includes the actual boot sequence, including how the BIOS, bootloader, and kernel all work together during this process. Then we'll talk about run levels and how they are used to shut down and reboot the system, among other things. From there, we'll move on to the Linux installation, and in this lesson, we'll focus not so much on the software installation process, but the preparation and things like how to configure your hard disk layout, your partitions, selecting and configuring a boot manager, and the purpose of shared library files. Next, we'll talk about GNU and Unix commands. And don't be alarmed, Linux is actually a Unix derivative, and many of the commands have remained the same. So I'll explain how to interact with and manage Linux from the command line. We'll cover file manipulation commands, searching, the shell environment, and also Linux's handy text editor, Vi, which you'll probably be using to modify system files. Our next topic is the Linux file system. We'll cover the different options, how to create a partition, and select the appropriate file system. Then move into administrative tasks like maintenance and repair. Up next, we'll talk about managing user resources with disk-based quotas and file permissions. 
We'll wrap up this first half of the course with a look at Linux's hard and symbolic links, which are similar to Windows shortcuts. And then we'll explain the roles and locations of Linux system files. Now I'd like to explain how I feel you should use this course so that you get the most out of it. Immediately following this introduction, move right into the lab setup and course scenario. The lab setup will cover information about what I'm using. Things like the operating system, versions, hardware, even my virtual machine setup. This is because I'm hoping you'll set up a similar system and follow along with me as I walk through the various topic demonstrations. And the course scenario will introduce you to Global Mantics. This is a mythical company that I use to explain different concepts. So this lesson will give you the foundational understanding of who Global Mantics is and what system requirements drive their own Linux installation plans. After we get these essentials out of the way, the next and probably most obvious step is to watch the lessons. And I suggest that you do so in order. Again, we split the course in half, the first dedicated to the first Linux certification exam, LX0101, and the second, LX0102. There are things that you learn in each lesson that are key to understanding the later material. Still, if you want to skip around a bit, of course you can. You may find that you want to focus on specific topics for pressing need on your current network, or you may feel confident enough about one area to feel like you want to skip it. But for those of you pursuing certification, I'd strongly suggest that you review each and every lesson. And here's a news flash. You can, and most definitely should, make frequent use of that pause button. Take a break, write down some notes, think things over. Also practice the demonstrations. I can't stress enough how important a learning tool this is. There's nothing like writing and practice to help really cement that knowledge. Once you're done watching the actual course lessons, watch them again, and yet again if you need to. During my own studies, I found that reading and rereading the same material uncovered a surprising amount of things I just didn't pick up on the first go around. So after you've gone through the lessons, you've practiced and you've reviewed, if you want to get certified, watch the included Transcender lessons. They show you how to install the Transcender product included with the course and how to use the Transcender practice exam as part of your certification study process. Then you should watch Preparing for the Linux Plus certification exam well, I'll share some details about the LX0101 exam and my thoughts on how to best prepare for it. After that, you should finish up with the Next Steps lesson where we review everything that we've talked about and what you might want to do next. Of course, you could toss out everything that I've said and approach the course any way you like. It's really up to you. So with that, sit back, have your test system on standby, get your fingers poised over the keyboard, and get ready to dive into the rest of our CompTIA Linux Plus certification course.